good day. I will discuss about the historical and sociological foundations of the curriculum. But first, let's define what is a curriculum. Curriculum standards based sequence of planned experiences where students practice and achieve proficiency in content and applied learning skills. It is a central guide for all educators as to what is essential for teaching and learning so that each student has access to rigorous academic experiences. Next is the historical foundations of the curriculum. The historical foundation of curriculum reflects the educational focus prevalent during a particular period or event in the Philippine history. Accordingly, it is said the development of the curriculum in the history of the Philippines depends on five motives. Now let's discuss about the historical progress of the education and curriculum in the Philippines from pre-colonial up to present. Pre-colonial In pre-colonial, most children were given vocational training which was supervised by parents, tribal tutors, or those assigned for specific specialized rules within their communities. Next is Spanish. The main readings were mostly catechismo and the method of instruction was mainly individual instruction. Next is the American. During this period, the elementary level is composed of four primary years and three intermediate years. The secondary or high school level is composed of four years and the third was the tertiary. Next is the Commonwealth. During this period, all schools develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and vocational efficiency and to teach the duties of citizenship. Next, the Japanese. During this period, the Tagalog, Philippine history, and character education were the focus. Love for work and dignity for labor was also emphasized. And the next one is the present, the implementation of the K-12 curriculum. The K-12 uplift the quality of education in the Philippines in order for the graduates to work and compete locally or even globally. Now, let's proceed with the curriculum theories and how they view curriculum from a historical perspective. First, Franklin Bobbitt, 1876-1956. He presented curriculum as science that emphasizes on students' needs. According to him, curriculum should prepare students for adult life. The second is Very Charters, 1875-1952. He also said that curriculum is a science that gives emphasis on students' needs. According to him, activities should ensure that the content or subject matter is related to objectives. Third is William Kilpatrick, 1871-1965. For him, curricula are purposeful activities which are child-centered. According to him, the purpose of the curriculum is child development and growth. Let's proceed with the fourth, Harold Rugg, 1886-1960. According to him, curriculum should develop the child and that it is child-centered. He also emphasized social studies and the teacher plans curriculum in advance. The fifth is Hollis Caswell, 1902-1994. He sees curriculum as organized around social functions of team, knowledge, and learner's interest. According to him, subject matter is developed around social functions and learner's interest. And the last but not the least is Ralph Tyler, 1902-1994. He believes that curriculum is a science and an extension of school's philosophy. For him, curriculum is always related to instruction and it is based on students' needs and interests. That's all for the historical foundations of the curriculum. Next to be discussed is about the sociological foundations of the curriculum. Now let's proceed to the sociological foundation of the curriculum. The sociological foundation of the school curriculum affects the development of the curriculum in the sense that there are certain factors which intervene in the curriculum development process due to cultural beliefs, societal expectations, values, norms, and traditions emanating from the background of stakeholders. 
There are many aspects of the society that need consideration in curriculum making. One, changes occurring in societal structures. Two, transmission of cultures. Three, social problems as issues for curriculum and economic issues. Foundation of school curriculum has its sociological basis. One of it is the aims of education. It tackles about individual aims, professional aims, social aims, and self-actualization aims. It aims for the development of social feelings and qualities of an individual to be a socially efficient learner. It also improves vocational efficiencies in the recreational pursuits. It is also the basis for the transmission of social heritage and the diffusion of more and more knowledge to the learners. Education aims for social service, social efficiency, emotional integration, national unity, and patriotism. The next basis is the curriculum. It is based on conditions, problems, and needs of society. It is also an agent for transmission of basic values and culture. It also prepares the child for global and world society. Curriculum is flexible and changeable for effective realization of socially determined objectives. It also leads to the development of genuine re-feeling of a group which have a spirit of social interaction. The next basis is the methods of teaching. It enables the child to acquire skills and knowledge needed to develop a capacity for social adjustment. It also develops a problem-solving and constructive thinking to socialize technique, project, or group methods. The next basis is the role of the teacher. The teacher will expose the concept of freedom, dignity of the individual rights and duties to transmit the same to the younger generation. The last basis is the school. The school reflects and epitomizes the larger society outside its walls. The school also balances, purifies, and simplifies the activities of the society in its environment. So, in conclusion, education takes place in society in which it is essential for social process. Education must be social in nature and develop democratic skills and values in students.